I, f I first met Sean when I was about um, 15, 15 years old. I'd, I'd come from the scholarship and, and signed for the under 18s. Um, mine and, and Sean's um, relationship started a bit rocky. Uh, my, my first year, he just he wouldn't pick me um, for, for good reason. I was I was way off the mark, but um, you know I used to go to him after every session and, and ask why I wasn't picked again, and he'd give me some some other rubbish excuse. So. Um, you know, we, we started like that, but um, you know, I think I think that that certainly put me in good stead for, for what was to come. I think if, if there's one thing you've got to be with your players, it's it's honest whether you're telling them good things or bad things. I think if you if you give them that, then there'll always be that mutual respect there, and I think he's he's definitely got that from all the players. Um, if he's telling you good things about your game, it's nice to hear it from him. But when he's telling you bad things about your game as well, you know you know he's doing it to get you better and to make you better. And under the 50 games, it's a, it's a massive achievement here. We're going to know. Um, I think it's credit credit to him and, and the way he's kind of um, applied himself when he was when he was with the, the academy and the, the under 21s as it was then and then and um, as an assistant coach to Madge and then the way he's kicked on once he's once he's been given his opportunity to head coach it looks been fantastic. Well, for me personally, you know, he's been probably the biggest factor in my career from a coaching point of view. Um, he's done a lot for me over the years. Uh, I think I started with him when I was 13, so. 15 years ago, 16 years ago now, so it's been a long time. Um, he's, a, he's just a really passionate um, Wigan coach. He's, I think he's probably in his dream job at the minute and, uh, and I think that shows with the passion that he comes in with every day. Oh, he loves being with his family, he loves having everybody around, um, made up with Teddy. Uh, but he, I mean, he's with him all the time and Teddy loves him. And he, he just really is a family man, loves, loves us all doing things together and, you know, he hates it if one of them can't do anything. I've seen him from before he even signed for Wigan as a player, you know, what he did the, then. Oh, oh, it affected him when he could no longer play. Um, and then he sort of dragged himself up, had a bit of a, a donor for a while, dragged himself up, got a proper job. <laughs> um, but behind the scenes was working away, you know, coaching, starting at St Pat's and working his way up. So to see him where he is now, it makes us neat. I'm really proud, but all the family's really proud of him as well. My playing career and Sean's coaching career um, progressed at very similar times. Um, you know, I moved up to the reserves, and Sean moved up to be the reserves coach. I moved to the first team, and, and he got the assistant job. Um, yeah, so I've, I've not been able to shake him for a, a few years. He even moved to New Zealand, and somehow I got tricked into coming back to him. Um, but I think, you know, what 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 sets Sean apart is is how much the players mean to him as as people, not just not just rugby players. I can remember when we were when we were kids in the under six, under 17, under 18, and um, you know Sean had said, "I don't care if you if you leave here um, a better player, I want you to leave here a better person." Um, you know, and that was for everyone who wasn't going to progress at the club. And um, at, at the time, I probably didn't didn't think much of it. And uh, but you know, Sean certainly did make us make us better people when we were at, at that age. I think when you're 17, 18, 19, you're, you're very impressionable. And, and Sean made sure that that we did everything right. And he's also very lucky. If you've seen the crossbar challenge, he's got the worst kicking technique I've ever seen. Um, that combined with his, his dodgy knees and his bad Achilles, but um, he's, he's the only bloke to, to not lose at the crossbar challenge yet this year. He likes salsa dancing. He likes salsa dancing. <laughs> yeah, we used to go uh, two or three times a week. Um, up until when it's got a bit crazy these last couple of years, we've not we've not been. But uh, when he's had a few drinks, he likes uh, <laughs> getting me up for a quick salsa. Liking it and being good at it are two different things. Well, is he is he uh, good at it? Um, ooh, I won't like to say. <laughs> I've seen better. <laughs> he's nine times out of ten. He's the first in and the last to go home. So um, you know. 
he puts a lot of pressure on himself um, and then he puts that pressure on us as well as, as players um, and we try and match his work, work ethic by uh, doing the business on the pitch but you know we know that him and his staff work as hard as we do. You actually look at his record over the last uh, few years and uh, the grand finals that we've been in albeit we haven't won. I think he'll get better and we'll win those grand finals and we'll win those Challenge Cup matches and all power to his elbow. I think Sean has a very good team around him. One of the things that typifies Wigan, uh, and Wigan where I'm involved, is the team of people. And Sean, whilst he's clearly the leader uh, and the motivator and the driver, has no problem whatsoever in delegating authority to other people. And that means that people have developed under his tutelage, him and Chris Radlinski. And the John Winders of this world, for example, and, and even Daryl Goulding now is beginning to come through rather well. Matty Peters, Head of Youth. We've got a great team of people around, so whilst yes, Sean is the figurehead, and Sean rightly should get the credit for 150 games, what Sean is is a leader of a group of people, along with Chris, who are a very strong group and will go on from strength to strength, I believe.